All right, welcome back. Now, despite the development in the financial services industry, many businesses, especially startups and SMEs, are still unable to effectively raise capital to remain a going concern or even take off in the first place. This is partly due to the stringent measures put in place by these fund providers to ensure that their limited capital is made available to organizations and invested in projects that will theoretically guarantee the best returns. Unfortunately, many organizations, especially SMEs, lack the capacity to scale through these hurdles because of their weak structures and the managerial inexperience of their founders and operators. Now, my guest, Dalintin Onyagoro, has a diverse work experience in various companies and roles. He is the, or currently the co-founder and CEO of Aladdin Digital, an app that supports Africa's economy by providing an ecosystem of solutions for gig workers and SMEs. Prior to that, they founded and advised blacklisting, an alternative database for chronic debtors and fraudulent individuals reported by verified online lending firms in Nigeria. Dalentin also served as the MD of Okash Nigeria under Opera Software AS, where they handled business development, product development, strategy formulation and execution, and people management. All right, many thanks for joining <coughs> Dalentin on Business Insights. A whole lot of people seem to um, have um, issues to differentiate in between startups and small businesses. They seem to misplace one for the other. Are there similarities? Are there key differences? Can you just um, enlighten us? Well, thank you for having me. Okay, the, name, the, the term startup is about five to six years old in Nigeria. I can still remember some of the earlier startups. I mean, that uh, basically in the financial side, uh, when they started with these small, small loans, what they call nano loans or digital loans, I remember the first time I applied for a loan on a mobile app and uh, within a few minutes I got alerts. I was like, is this possible, mm. you know, in Nigeria that uh, somebody is not seeing you physically, there's no account officer, you're not filling a physical form, and within five, ten minutes somebody is willing to give you 5,000 naira. So that was the beginning of a turnaround, you know, in, in terms of financial technology. Mm. Uh, but right now we have various types of startups. But let me try to differentiate between SMEs and startups. I had earlier this year, uh, one of my billionaire friends, I will say billionaire friend because he has an oil and gas company in the southeast. Uh, his monthly turnover is over 10 billion. In fact, he was, was my classmate actually. We went to the same school, we were in the same class. We were both read mechanical engineering. And he just chatted me on WhatsApp and said, please, how do I convert my business to a startup? <laughs> He's somebody who has almost probably 100 employees, okay. you know, a lot of, you know, tankers, he has petrol filling station, doing billions in turnover a month. But he wanted to raise $10 million, mm. all right? So he felt he had to convert his SME into a startup. So I, I sent him some documents. Mm. So, so, so it's very critical. People are getting confused. You know, people hear startup, startup. And they say, but I've been doing business and paying salaries. How do I become a startup? What is so special about these startups? Mm. You have startups raising as much as ninety million dollars. You have mm. startups raising as much as you know fifty million dollars, five million dollars. Small boys, twenty-seven years old, has a two, three month startup, has raised ten million dollars. And mm. you are wondering, I've been in business for twenty-five years before this boy was born. How am I not able to raise ten million dollars? Mm. So it's very critical that we explain what is a, what a startup is and what an SME is. A startup is a young business that is designed primarily, primarily to grow very fast. Oh. All right, and normally they actually use technology to bring new innovations into the public in, the, in, terms, of, in terms of innovation. Let me use the term Babin Saloon. Well, whereas an SME, for example, is not about growing fast, and F SME is more predictable and also in short term more profitable, oh. while startups are not actually profitable. Oh. They deal with more valuation. I will break that in very, okay, very, sure. very, very shortly. Now, for example, I may have, yeah, I can see a Babin Saloon in my area, oh. and I feel there's still one more need for a Babin Saloon in my area. So I will go ahead and replicate that same Babin Saloon, but I now provide a better environment, oh. cozy environment, better professionals, better staff, customer care. Maybe when you come to my Babin Saloon, I give you a bottle of wine or tea or coffee, yeah. it's still a Babin Saloon. Yeah. So that business model has been established for donkey years. You bab, you collect your revenue, and so on and so forth. But all you're just doing is adding, you're just like, you know, not reinventing the wheel per se, but mm -hmm. you're just adding some level of uh, finesse to what already exists. That is a small business. Yeah. Because you're not going to be replicating that Babin Saloon across Lagos in the next two years or mm -hmm. across Nigeria. But a startup can start up today with a new innovation in Babin. Yeah. Maybe it's bringing a new app or a new technology that has not been seen before. A novel idea in that same Babin industry. Yeah. So that's why startups are different. So you are just replicating Babin Saloon, yeah. adding 
adding some small small touch up here to make it different you know sure. differentiate yourself from the market but a startup comes on with maybe an app that babs the hair automatically or an app that does something you know very funny yeah. so when they come they are able to raise more capital because they are bringing technology and into innovation and they are, they are designed to take over the market in maximum five years yeah. now why you you are only after making sure at the end of the month you can cover your debt both short term debt meet them and then pay your salaries and make some money for yourself so yeah. that's the difference between smes and okay. startups so let me stop there then you can take it from, from, from there. all right so basically from all i can just um infer from all that you have said uh, for startups they have the benefit of um innovation and um, technology to do things differently that the ordinary small businesses cannot do. Exactly. So it's not about um, their paid up capital or their financial uh, <coughs> levels per se. Exactly. So like I said, startups, you know, the word startups usually ride on technology. There, there are different types of startups. There's mm. agri startups. You understand that there are those in insurance. That's what they call insure tech. There's fintech. You know, there are, you know, there's food tech. Mm. There's also prop tech, property. Yes. So for, uh, two days ago, a friend of mine called me and he's designing a platform that's going to actually fragment, you know, your investment to real estate yeah. where you can use the 10,000 naira and you own a portion of your building, yeah. you know, and it's just on app, just go on the app, you know, put your account, fund your mm -hmm. wallet and look at different buildings and different, you know, rent and then apply 10,000 naira. You're not a shareholder in a building. So wow. what you cannot naturally do mm -hmm. previously. You know, they bring in new technologies, sometimes using blockchain, for example, okay. to verify who is who and who has a particular, how much stock you have in that particular property, mm. so that when it has time for dividend share, you know how much you're going to get. Okay. So, prop tech is rising up, fintech, insure tech, food tech, agri tech, all these guys are just mm. using technology to do the same things that we know do differently. differently. And they are designed, and yeah, so they are designed to grow faster. Mm. So, that's why they also raise significant amount of money, because mm. for you to actually grow fast, mm -hmm. to get to the next level, you need to raise Lots a of lot of money. Okay, fine. So how does one uh, create a startup as it is? The first key to creating a startup is what are you innovating? Hmm. What brand new idea or novel idea do you have? Or even if not a novel idea, you know, you have your version of something. For example, there are a lot of fintechs today that do the same thing. A lot of apps today that give out nano loans. You know, mm -hmm. last time I checked, there are over 500 apps on mm -hmm. Play Store that give loans today. You know, and so they're all doing the same thing. You understand that? And they're all called startups. You understand mm -hmm. that? But they are using, for example, the difference is that the way they actually um, verify their customers might be mm -hmm. different. The technology behind True. the way they onboard you and the way they verify you before they give you a loan maybe maybe novel to them, or they may have a patent for that type of technology that verifies customers before they give a loan. But you, the end user, may not see the difference. But the investor knows that this guy has built something that allows him to the failure rate or what they call um, the debt, debt, debt ratio to reduce. Mm. You know, other guys will be having you know, 80% debt. You know, when they give out loans, the bad loans is about 80%. But this guy has 2%. So we are, we are still in the same industry, but he has improved this process in such a way that, yeah. you know, investors' monies are not lost, mm. you know, when they invest in him. So that's different. So the key word there is innovation. And who is your audience? You know, what are you bringing to the table? And how fast? Can you actually iterate, launch, mm. you know, do product? That's what they call product market fit. That means you're able to say, okay, this my product has a market. There's an audience for it. Somebody's willing to pay for it, and you're able to scale very fast. Yeah. So that's what differentiates a startup from a small business. Okay, fine. That really uh, yeah. settles it now. But let's talk about funding. In my intro, I talked about um, funding challenges for startups, for small businesses, even for large um, businesses as well. But let's just focus on startups and small businesses. Before now, it has always been uh, going to the commercial banks and uh, dropping some sort of uh, some sort of um, collaterals and uh, you know f scaling all the hurdles before you can eventually <coughs> get um, these finances that you need for your business or to even upscale your business. But lately, there have been talks about um, people starting businesses from. Um, uh, finances they got from family and friends. Uh, we've, talk, we've heard about uh, uh, crowdfunding and uh, private equity. Can you just share some of this with us? Okay, so um, funding is actually open to both SMEs and startups. True. But just that startups have a brighter chance to raise more, more significant money. Mm -hmm. uh, before I came here today, I was looking at a, a crowdfunding site called wefunder.com. Mm -hmm. uh, we are actually listed on wefunder.com. We're actually raising um, some money right now on wefunder. Mm -hmm. So I looked at a particular startup. The, this guy has raised $981,000 in mm -hmm. the last two to three months, almost a million dollars. And I looked at the product. He has not really launched his product. 
you only did, had that phone yes already. They, already you go to the platform like i can go to you go to wefona.com slash black you will see their like all their name like you will go there live everybody can go and check them out Nine hundred eighty one thousand dollars raised through crowdfunding people are investing 100 dollars 300 because they believe in the idea you only has 100 customers mm. who have only done transaction for two weeks okay let's break let's just take it one step at, yes. the, at the other for some people may not really understand there have been so much talk about crowdfunding crowdfunding what is it really and how does it really operate and work so what, what crowdfunding does is that it allows you you know as a startup mostly SMEs may not be able to do that mm. so as a startup it allows you to actually tap into the community so you share your idea you know on their platform and people see your idea and they, they believe in your idea and they can pitch in as small as hundred dollars yeah. which is about hundred thousand naira to buy shares in your company so they're actually counting on you they're betting on you that you're going to be a successful startup yeah. so that actually started mostly in america where they actually changed the regulation yeah. in a few years ago to allow what they call community rounds community rounds means that your customers your friend family and friends and people in the public who can actually become part of your company by just investing a small unit of hundred dollars yeah. into your company and a lot of mega startups you know today or big companies started by crowdfunding all right yeah. by allied but for you to do that in most cases, you have to be a U.S. registered start company. Okay. That's one of the advantages that startups have that SMEs don't have. Uh -huh. A lot of these startups you see today, uh -huh. I don't want to call their names, they're all registered in the U.S. Even my own company, Aladdin, uh -huh. who are headquarters in, in Delaware, we're in the U.S. So we have to register a company in the U.S. and the U.K. So it has to be in the United States. Yes, yeah. The yeah, because, for you to do, because you have to get SEC approval in the U.S. You have okay. to get, there's a whole documentation, a whole process that's involved. So it doesn't really come so easy. Yeah, it doesn't, but it can be done. A lot of it. So I was among, I was among the first, my startup was at the second startup in africa mm. to go on that platform and that was in 2021 when we went to the, on that platform we were the second uh, startup aladdin to raise money through crowdfunding mm. on we Funder. but it was a whole lot of process a lot of documentations a lot mm. of stuff but it allows you to raise money easily from american people i have a lot of american investors who just oh this is africa we like what you're doing in africa i'm giving you a thousand dollars so give ten thousand dollars i'm give five thousand dollars so crowdfunding is one channel but beyond that also venture capitalists mm. are people who are actually designed to give you money as a startup up. all right they look at your proposal they look at they do due diligence on you they look are at they your like projections so they're not banks they're just individual um what would i say finance companies or mm. investment companies some of them are actually family investments so a big family that is wealthy can have somebody to manage a particular fund they say 50 million dollars set aside mm. to invest in fast growing startups mm. So that's why it's quite difficult for SMEs are quite limited. They always go to commercial banks. But some startups now are not designing products to help SMEs with their, you know, working finance. Okay. So, for example, you have uh, maybe a PO. All right, I know some startups actually give you up to 10 million naira for your PO, you okay. know, yeah. and then they just fund it for you and they take that money back, you know, in like invoice financing okay. and stuff like that. But to raise real money, like 10 million dollars, 5 million dollars for SMEs is quite difficult because the venture capitalists cannot see that speed. They can't mm. see that speed to growth. They're asking you, when are you going to, you know, Return dominate Nigeria? Yeah, you know, okay. when are you going to dominate? When are you going to move across Africa? When are you going to move to London? When are you going mm. to have a London office? The average small business is not thinking in that direction. Not at all. So that's the difference. So it's really, you see, this, this, there's a psychology between startup and SMEs. So if you want to actually make that switch, first of all, you must have an innovative product that is able to scale extremely fast okay. to attract venture capitalists, angels, crowdfunding, and all these other things that are available. All right. So, but uh, from what you have said, uh, it's, it's not really uh, something that's so 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 common for the small businesses. But how are these uh, forms of uh, funding popular? as in the, the level of popularity in Nigeria. For instance, you've talked about crowdfunding that um, you have to have some presence in the United States. What about for pri um, private equity and venture uh, capital? Do you really need so much um, hurdles per se to scale? No, no, no. The, 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 you can actually be a Nigerian entity. A lot of Nigerian companies that actually mm. raise money from venture capital. But okay. for most venture capitals, because they're also looking at you know, short-term you know, investment. So see, let me just give you a start. Startups are not designed to be profitable. Mm. And I want to say this clearly because a lot of Nigerian They're investors, not designed to be profitable. Yes, they're not, they're not designed to be profitable they are designed for valuation they are designed for exits mostly okay. you understand that that's why you took uber uber mm. was operating for years mm. and uber was never profitable mm. but it was, it was valued at above 50 billion dollars the value of the company was above 50 billion dollars mm. is when they did an ipo you know when they did when they went public yes. all right that all the guys that invested for years cashed out 
Mm. So that's our start of the Malibu. They're actually designed to grow very fast. Mm. Their value increases. You can see, for example, uh, let, me, let me use a popular one called Paystack. Paystack mm. was bought by, by Stripe for $200 mm. million. Dollars. Yeah. And Paystack was just about four or five years old. Or but imagine so a, a four or five years company being purchased at the rate of 200, that's 200 billion today mm. for a company that's four or five years old. Because it grew so fast, you know, you know, and then they could see the value and it's supporting thousands of businesses, doing billions of Naira in transactions per day. That is what Stripe saw. And mm -hmm. they saw the potential to spread across Africa. And they, they put $200 million on the table. Mm -hmm. You understand that? So, on that thing again, I want to point is that a lot of SMEs are, they are actually startups in disguise. How so? Yeah, because they, what, some of them have innovated a lot of things. If you go online, you see people that have innovated some you know, technologies that can be scaled across Africa. Mm -hmm. But because they have the SME mentality, mm -hmm. they don't understand the startup ecosystem. They are losing out on venture capital. So they need some sort of reorientation. Yes, reorientation, a lot of training. So I'm actually thinking about it. Because a lot of SMEs have done things very innovative in the medical line, mm -hmm. some in the beauty in the beauty side. Some even you go to some people who would have designed a bike. I saw a guy online mm -hmm. who designed his own type of uh, bike. Mm. You know, using scrap metal and very beautiful bikes. But you understand that? So if you go to a, a local investor, they will tell you, okay, I'll give you 100 million, mm. but I want a return on investment in six months. Mm. A venture capitalist can give you 100 million. I will not call you a line for the next two years. Mm. You get to my point? Because as he's giving you that 200 million, he's giving 10 other startups 200 million. Oh. His calculation is that out of that 10, mm. eight will fail, two will succeed. Oh. And the two that will succeed will give him back his money plus interest. Wow. So you can see that venture capital, 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 capital they have a different mindset. Mm. But a Nigerian investor, a local investor, will give you 50 million. You won't allow you rest. <laughs> the chief will call you to VGC every uh, two days to come and explain what happened to his 50 million. But a venture capital will give you $1 million. Mm. And I'm sure they, they, they may not even call you. All they want is just your monthly report or quarterly report telling them how the business is going. Wow. Because they're betting on you that you are going to return that investment 10x. For mm. example, some of the guys that invested in Uber, the guy was saying he got, I think, did, I'm sorry to say, I think 1,000x. His investment, yes, one but when Uber went public, he invested small money. But by the time Uber went public, he got the most one thing, 1,000 X. If I don't want to take his investment, he became a millionaire and started investing in other startups from his own Uber investment. Mm. So that's how powerful startup is. They give you the kind of you know, when they exit mm. the value of what you bought. Mm. You know, sometimes you can buy a startup when the startup is just one dollar per share, yeah. all right, and then by the time it's exiting, the value of that share is 70 dollars. Mm. So that's a 70 X. So if if there are so much advantages uh, with the startups um, uh, ecosystem and all of that, so how come um, the average Nigerian is not uh, starting some sort of startup or something? No, well, there is. There's, like, I just like, uh, it's the evening in Lekki where I was in a, um, in a start, uh, an event for startups. I mean, I saw mm. startups everywhere. A lot of founders. There is this sticker: founder, founders. So somebody was saying there are over twenty thousand startups already in Africa. Oh wow! And That's Nigeria so is the, one of the leader. One of the leaders in Africa is Nigeria. Nigeria. Mm get significant amount of investment from other Silicon Valley or any mm. other places. So the, the startup boom is already here. Mm. So people are now build and Nigerians are very Africans are creative. Mm. Kenyans, Rwandans, people are creating a lot of stuff, right? So it's you that don't know that don't know. Mm. But really young people are creating startups everywhere, All every right. day. So okay. but you see what we need to also educate millions of SMEs out there mm -hmm. who have innovative stuff mm -hmm. but don't know how to package it. Yes. You know I've heard a lot of people say I, I, you can actually restart your business for five hundred dollars mm. in US. I mean, in the United States, you can do it for one thousand dollars, and then you have a US bank account. But these are the things that those guys see. They don't mm. want to invest in Nigerian entities. Mm. They want to invest in US entities where you pay your taxes, mm -hmm. where you are fully regulated by SEC mm -hmm. and a whole lot of stuff. So that's why most startups have to register in the US right. in order to attract foreign capital. All okay. Right. Yeah. Let's talk about Afro Global expansion. You know, there's a whole lot of uh, issues uh, happening. Uh, globally with the wars everywhere but let's talk about how um this expansion is going in the midst of um struggling um, economy okay so the honest is that I, anybody who is smart will tell you that if you want to earn anything today earn in dollars hmm. all right so if you are a business that is still earning in naira you have a long way to go and that, that does not that, and this cuts across both sme startups conglomerates whoever you are okay that's why a lot of people are leaving the country. A lot of strategic investors, you know about GSK, a lot of people. So if you earn in Naira and then you convert to dollar, you realize you're not doing well. You can make a billion Naira, you think you're doing well. Convert that one billion to mm. dollar and compare to the investment you have made and the loans you have taken you to took mm. to get to that level of revenue, you realize that you're not doing really well. Nothing, yeah. So what, what the Afro Global concept is a concept that talks about how do I also penetrate other African countries or how do I actually also earn money from diaspora? 
from Africans in diaspora. I need to earn in pounds. I need to earn in dollar. You get my point. So you don't. Need, so you don't need that thing. So that's that thing. As a business, sit down in 2025. Ask yourself, how do I actually, you know, change this business to also earn dollar? You no, know, apart from naira. Because I will earn naira today. Today is black market 1,200. I don't mm -hmm. know. You can see what it means. So before, even it's also actually affecting a lot of startups too. You know, for example, all those startups who are in the payment space. You do payment. They charge you 15 naira, 100 naira. Yeah. How many 15 naira transactions will you do to get one dollar? Mm. So you realize that now. So that's why most startups today are actually beginning to expand to Kenya. They're expanding to Rwanda. They're going to other African countries. Some are actually having a London office, you know, because they're in London. They want to get some license to start getting transactions. They can earn in pounds or in from Canada, Canadian dollars or yeah. stuff like that. So I call it the Afro Global. And there are a lot of opportunities. And from, if you look at what Ruto, Kenyan president, did and uh, the, uh, Kagame, which is the Rwandan president, yeah. where they said by end of December they're going to open up their countries. It becomes oh. visa free for all Africans. So it shows you that the direction is that we are going to become a borderless Africa. Yeah. All right, borderless Africa is a, is a situation whereby you can actually access any African country visa free. Yeah. And once that happens, the, the barriers to trade begin to shrink. Yeah, and everything right? just be open. Exactly. So that's why people like Aladdin, like my company now, we are designing a Pan African payment system okay. where you can send money in less than one minute to Kenya. You can send money to Tanzania, to Rwanda. Right. So because we are, we are positioning ourselves to be that go to platform in Africa where you can do payments across Africa and also outside Africa. So because you have to start thinking in that direction that yeah. I have to position my business to. So talking about naira transactions alone, yeah. you know, or Ghanaian cities, but those two trans, those two currencies are also, you know, uh, very volatile. And yeah. some other, 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 some other African countries. Right? So you need to start thinking about how do I expand just within Africa country. and also yeah. internationally. If you are to survive this struggling economy, right. everybody should learn to earn outside naira. Yeah, right. That's the secret to 2024. If you are to survive. All right. Thank you so much. All right. So Valentin, as we wrap up this now, very quickly now. So what's the future of um, startups in? Um, not just Nigeria and in Africa, and what is your advice for people who are actually going or thinking about um, getting into <coughs> startups? So the first thing I will tell you is that the startup scene, especially in the financial side, is almost getting saturated. Mm. I keep saying that because you see, people are doing the same things over and over again. So if you're actually going to start a startup, please think of other sectors. Mm. What can I do in other sectors? You are an expert in engineering. There are still innovations in engineering that we have not seen, agriculture, so many areas. But if you to do a startup, come up with an innovation that is new, or come up with maybe uh, maybe a, an improvement on an existing innovation mm. that can actually you know disrupt the game. Once you have that and you have an audience, you are good to go. Mm. All right. So as that's what, if you're an SME, you have been struggling with your business, but you know that this idea is innovative. It can mm. be a food drink, or a, a new innovative food drink for health, mm. or rather you have patented as small as that thing. You can earn billions from it. Mm. All you need is somebody to package you and show you that this thing can actually be a startup. People don't even know how to do PowerPoint slides. Mm. They don't even know how to do anything. Mm. So you don't even know how to package yourself to become a startup. There's an art. Mm. There's an art, the formula to becoming a startup when you have an innovative idea or else you end up being a small business. All right. Thank you. Thank you so much. And that's uh, indeed how much we can take on the show for today. My guest has been Dalentin Onyagor. He is the CEO and um, founder of... Uh, Aladdin Digital. Many thanks for being a part of it. Thank you very much for having me. All right. That's as much as we can take business insights. We'll return to your screen. Same time, my name is Justin Akadonye. Many thanks for being there.